Welcome back to the second law of thermodynamics where we're studying entropy. In this video we have n moles of a sample of liquid mercury and we're going to heat it from some initial temperature to some final temperature meaning that meaning that the temperature temperature is going to increase meaning that delta T is greater than zero and we're doing it at a constant pressure of one bar and since we're at constant pressure they give us a molar heat capacity okay and we're asked to find two things number one we're asked to find delta H we're also asked to find the change in entropy and we're going to go about seeing how we do that now obviously we're not dealing with um, with legitimate numbers we don't know the number of moles we don't know the exact temperatures I'm going to focus more in this video on helping you set up the problem because in physical chemistry the hardest part is setting it up and honestly, like I always say, memorizing a bunch of formulas is not going to get you anywhere. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to, de to derive the expression that you're going to use to solve the problem. Okay. So what do I know? Well, I know that I know that enthalpy is going to be a function of P and T. Okay. That's a really important thing. I also know that entropy can be defined in several ways. Number one, entropy can be defined as a, pressure, a function of pressure and temperature, or I know that entropy can be defined as a function of volume and temperature. Okay. Well, you know, in this problem, I, you know, I don't exactly know how volume is working here. Um, it's a liquid, so volume is pro probably not changing very much. But I do know that I'm dealing with a pressure. I'm dealing with a pressure. I know that I'm dealing with a, a molar heat capacity at constant pressure, and I certainly know that temperature is changing, so I'm likely to want to express entropy in terms of pressure and temperature. Okay, And with enthalpy, there's really no choice here. It's a function of pressure and temperature. So let's worry about finding an expression for delta H first. Okay, So all I'm going to do is I'm always going to start out with dh. I'm going to start with dh, du, ds, dg. That's always what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to use whatever it's a function of to create a mathematical expansion. And these expansions, these are not really physical expansions. These are mathematical expansions. So this is multivariable calculus at this point. dh is the partial of h with respect to pressure at constant t dp plus the partial of H with respect to T at constant P dt. Okay. Now, this is a mathematical expansion of a differential enthalpy. You can do the same thing for entropy in either of these cases right here, which is actually what we're going to do later. But notice, as of now, notice that we have dp is equal to zero because delta P is zero. We're at constant pressure. If you're at constant pressure, then dP is zero, and so this term effectively drops out at zero because it's multiplied by dP. And so now what I have is I have dH, which is equal to the partial of H with respect to T at constant P dT. Okay? Now, there are some um, identities that you should be able to recognize and typically ones that are pretty easy to recognize are these ones that have a dt in the denominator. Um, typically when you have something with a dt in the denominator it's usually going to have something to do with a heat capacity okay and everything else you just sort of have to recognize. Well if you have like the partial of h with respect to t you have this dt in the denominator and I also have this P here that signifies them at constant pressure. Well, that means that this is going to be a heat capacity at constant pressure, and it's going to be a molar heat capacity. Okay, So that means that I can make the substitution that the partial of H with respect to T at constant P is simply the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. So let's do that. Let's say that DH is equal to the molar heat capacity at constant pressure dt. Okay, and that's pretty handy because I know the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. So what I can do now is I can integrate both sides. This is going to be from h1 to h2. That's just a formality. You can really just simplify this to delta h. And I have to include the heat capacity in, inside the integral here 
because notice that particularly with this term, the heat capacity is a function of the temperature, so you have to integrate. And this is going to be from T1 to T2. So now I'm getting an expression for delta H. So let's see what we have here. Okay, So we have 30.093. 30.093 integrated from T1 to T2 over dt, and that's multiplied by the number of moles, plus, and then we add on the next term, because remember, the, the integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals, right? That's one of the integral laws. Negative 4.944. So negative 4.944 times 10 to the minus third, and then that's multiplied by t, right? By t and then dt, and we're integrating that. But notice I can pull the constant outside the integral, right? And then it's evaluated from t1 to t2. And at this point, um, I can basically just set up the, or evaluate the integral. So delta H, the expression for this, is going to be N times, what's the integral of a constant with respect to T? Well, it's just the constant, 30.093 times delta T. And just keep in mind, delta T is equal to T2 minus T1, right? And then minus, plus a minus, what happens when you integrate T over DT? Well, Number one, you keep the constant, 4.944 times 10 to the minus third. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have t and then square it and then divide by this power. And basically what's going to happen is it's going, when you evaluate t squared from t1 to t2, it's going to be t2 squared minus t1 squared, all multiplied by the number of moles. And that right there, that is your expression for delta H, okay? So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. And we're actually going to do a similar thing for the entropy change. Now remember, we said entropy in this case was a function of pressure and temperature. And since we're dealing with a constant pressure heat capacity, that's also a good indication that we're going to want to use this expansion of, of entropy. So what I'm going to say is, is I'm going to do a similar thing. Play a similar game. ds is equal to the partial of s with respect to p at constant t dp plus the partial of entropy with respect to temperature at constant p dt. Now, once again, remember, we're at constant pressure, so delta p and therefore dp are equal to zero. And so this term drops out. And so that greatly simplifies things. Now we're left with, oops, let me get my white marker, ds is equal to the partial of s with respect to t at constant p dt. Now, like I said before, there are some identities you should know. This was one of them. Another one that you might be able to see is if I have the partial of u with respect to t at constant v, this is equal to what? Well, you know, I have this, this dt in the denominator. I have this u up here. But then I notice I have this v right here. So that probably means that what I'm dealing with is, number one, I'm dealing with a heat capacity. But this particular one is at constant, at constant volume, and it's a molar. Okay. So a similar thing is going to happen when you're dealing with entropy. Notice... I have this dt here in the denominator, okay, and I have this pressure right here. Hopefully you notice that this is at constant pressure, just like we said in the problem. But when I have this entropy up here, something a little bit different is going to happen, okay. I can make a substitution. I can say that the partial of s with respect to t at constant p, okay, it's not just equal to the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. It's equal to this quantity over T. Okay, so hopefully it's a little bit reminiscent of when you said entropy, dS was equal to dQ over T. In fact, it's not just a coincidence that this happens. Okay, so when you see partial of S with respect to T at constant P, this is CPM over T. 
Another thing, if you see the partial of s with respect to t at constant v, this is, as you would guess, molar heat capacity at constant volume over t. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now I can make a substitution. I can say ds, a differential entropy element, is equal to the molar heat capacity at constant pressure over t times dt multiplied by the number of moles. And since moles are independent of temperature, I can integrate both sides like this. This is going to be from S1 to S2. That's going to give me delta S. This is going to be from T1 to T2. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now we're going to get an expression for delta S. Okay, so number one, let's go ahead and write out what we have. We're going to have N times is going to be the integral of what? Well, it's going to be 30. What exactly was it? It was, let's go back up here, 30.093. So this is going to be 30.093. That was a constant originally in the heat capacity expression, but we divide by T. So it's going to be over T multiplied by DT evaluated from T1 to T2. Okay, then what happens? Well, now we're adding on the next term. So adding a minus, we're going to pull, we're going to again multiply by n, and then we're going to multiply by what? 4.944 times 10 to the minus third, right? So n times 4.944 times 10 to the minus third. And then we're going to, it's times t, but we have to divide by t, right? Divide by t, multiply by dt. And we're going to evaluate that like this because, and we could, you know, we could pull the constant out if we wanted. But the point is that the moles are independent of the temperature. We evaluate it from t1 to t2. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now let's figure out what delta s is. Let's evaluate the integral. So we're going to have n multiply by, what's the what's the integral of a constant over T dt? Well, it's going to be the constant 30.093 times the natural log of T2 over T1. Okay, what else do we get? Well, then we're going to subtract off 4.944 times 10 to the minus third, and that's going to be multiplied by n. And then what happens? Well, notice these t's cancel out, and so you're just multiplying by dt. When you do the integral, you're going to end up getting, you're going to end up getting t2 minus t1, if, which if you remember was delta t. Okay. And this right here, do this in purple. This is, I'm going to do it in green, actually. Whenever I think of entropy, I think of green for some reason. So this, this is your expression for the entropy of the heating of the liquid mercury. Okay? So just remember, um, you shouldn't memorize a bunch of formulas. You should recognize some identities and derive these formulas on the spot. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. See you in the next video. We're going to do some more problems.